Hi friends, welcome to day four of our Wisdom Psalms. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for this new day. Thank you again for your word. Thank you for the psalm that we're about to study. Lord, thank you that you care whether we walk wisely or foolishly, and you give us some instruction on that. Help us to be skillful in our living, Lord, for you, and be able to live in a way that brings you glory. Teach us today. Thank you. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and read. We are on Psalm 112, page 69 of the workbook. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generations of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes his teeth and melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Okay, you know, just a quick note right there as I wrap up reading that psalm. This is so similar to psalm number one. Do you see how psalm number one begins? Blessed is the man. And here we have blessed is the man. And then the last few words of psalm one, we have uh, the wicked will perish. And here in Psalm 112, the wicked will perish. So today we're wrapping up this week and it's our first week in Psalms. It's our first week and we're studying wisdom Psalms, which maybe isn't the easiest place to start. Uh, but so in some ways, so good for us too. Uh, this really sets the stage. I think there's a reason why Psalm 1, being a wisdom psalm, is the first psalm of the Psalter. So let's dig in here. Friends, I, I just want to say a word about studying Hebrew poetry and studying and poet studying poetry to begin with like in some ways it almost goes against the grain of studying poetry by breaking it apart so much and asking so many questions right I, there is a place for just enjoying the beauty of the psalm and we miss it here this psalm is actually an acrostic psalm uh, so that each line begins with a the next letter of the hebrew alphabet we miss that entirely when we translate it into the english but there's something about just enjoying the beauty of the psalm so if you ever get a little Little bit frustrated picking it apart just go back read the entire psalm enjoy this prayer this song of the psalmist and maybe choose one line that just sort of causes your heart to sing a little bit and and slow down there, slow down on that one line. In some ways, I did that myself today, focused on a couple of different lines, uh, verses of, of, the, of the psalm. But in true inductive format, we also, you know, that's so that's like one side of studying poetry, right? The other side is we're doing inductive Bible study. We want to better understand who God is and who we are in relationship to him. How are we to relate to him? And I think this week we want to know, okay, what does it mean to be wise, to walk skillfully in life? with the Lord. And so we, in order to do that with inductive 
active study, we become curious with the word. Have fun with this, enjoy it. Really, when we're making observations, there is no right or wrong answer here. We ask whatever questions we want to ask. I would love to know what questions you asked today. And I hope that before you take part in this video that you've already asked a question or two of the Lord and you've sought to answer it. And then this is just sort of supplemental where we can see, okay, what did we find here together? All right, so I, of course, asked, who is blessed? I mean, uh, that's how this psalm begins. Praise the Lord, which I, which I noted and looked that up. That means hallelujah. It's one word, hallelujah. And it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's saying to admire Yahweh, hallelujah. Glory be to you, almighty God. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's admiring. And this is like an interjection. We can use this. I mean, just a little bit of a practical application. We can use this all day long when we recognize a blessing during the day. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I admire you, Yahweh. I admire you. A little, yeah, I, that might be my favorite application for today. But who is blessed? Well, clearly the psalmist says the man who fears the Lord, the one who fears the Lord, the people who fear the Lord. Uh, these people uh, and, and so then I asked in good inductive uh, format, we just keep asking questions. Be curious with the word. What does it mean to fear the Lord? <laughs> and the psalmist tells us, see, it's always, uh, see, you know, see this parallelism within the poetry. The, when we ask a question, a lot of times the answer is right here in scripture, scripture interpreting scripture. And the psalmist says, okay, Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. And I ask, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, the psalmist then answer it, answers it. The one who greatly delights in his command. Greatly delights in his command. And so, okay, you can see where this is going. It's just like a three-year-old. Well, Lord, then, what does it mean to delight in your commandments was my next question. And so here I looked up the cross. Well, there were several cross references, but I think this speaks to it. Psalm 128, 1 says, to walk in his ways to walk in his ways. That's what it means to delight in his commandment. So it's not just like reading a commandment and thinking, oh, wow, Lord, that's delightful. <laughs> that's a really good commandment. That was really good of you to think of that, Lord. No, it's so much more to delight in God's commandment. Commandments means to, as Psalm 128.1 says, to walk in his ways. It's not just to know it, to read it and understand it here, but it is actually to go on and do it. That shows our delight in God's ways, in God's ways. So, I, you know, the other thing that I asked here is, is what, you know, and, and I, I already, you know, I asked this question, what does it mean to fear the Lord? To fear, I, I just want to touch on that because to fear uh, isn't, yeah, to, to fear here is to just have this profound respect for Yahweh, to have this profound respect and admiration for who God is. That's the fear of the Lord. That's the fear. And then this idea of delighting in his commandments, walking in his ways, like actually practicing it. So I also asked a couple of questions regarding verses two and three. What is, what does it mean? My, what, what does the psalmist mean by mighty in the land? Uh, what kind of wealth and riches is he referring to here? Because didn't yesterday's psalm, we kind of spoke to the demise of the person that seeks after wealth and power and riches. So what's up with this psalm? Is it saying the opposite thing? Well, you know, I, I think we have, again, some beautiful 
cross references that that helps that helps us to understand his it, the psalmist says verse two his offspring will be mighty in the land and here's a couple of well there were several cross references here psalm 25 13 see if this helps you it helped me it says his soul shall abide in well-being and his offspring shall inherit the land so when we're referring to the soul are we referring to physical land no no i think this is pointing us to and, it, and it's so wonderful that we can read the psalm through the lens of jesus christ through the lens for those of you who just studied first and second peter together we know peter speaks to this eternal inheritance that god is that god has in store for us in heaven through his son, Jesus Christ, right? So that's what this is referring to. And we know, again, for those of you who studied Genesis with me last year, we talked, and then, and this goes all the way back to John where we said this, God uses very physical things to teach us about our spiritual life. And so he uses, the, the psalmist is using this beautiful poetic imagery about some physical things that really speak to our spiritual lives. We are, uh, we are for those who fear the Lord, for those who put their trust in the Lord, we are wealthy, we are rich. Uh, Paul talks about that in Ephesians chapter one and two, just about how rich we are in Christ. And I think that's backed up then by verse four. And for me, when I ask this question, which I almost always ask, what does this passage say about who God is? And friend, if you have time for just one question, that's a good one. It doesn't have to be that one, but I highly recommend it. And I saw the answer to that one in verse one that, okay, Yahweh, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be admired. And then verse four, I think points to God, this light. Uh, the psalmist says, light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. And I thought that really spoke to God. When I wondered, who is the he? Is this God or is this the man that fears the Lord? And you know, friends, I don't know. See what you think. I'd love to hear your answer on this. I think it speaks to both. I think it speaks to both in the way uh, the sun and the moon both shine light. Uh, here, Verse four, he is the light in the darkness. It took me, I, I thought of Isaiah 9 two. the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. That is the light of Jesus Christ that Isaiah is prophesying about, right? And so here, uh, just as the sun is to the moon, so is the, this, the, there's this relationship between God and the godly person, right? The sun shines by, I wrote down, the sun shines by its own glorious light and the moon does not, but still the moon shines. Uh, it reflects the light coming to it by the sun. So I think that verse four could speak to both. That was one of those verses. Remember when I said at the beginning of today, like if you just wanna read this as poetry for the day, by all means, but then maybe pick out a verse that stands out to you. That was my verse for today. Verse four, light shines in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. And then friends, what I did, and this is another idea for, for inductive study, is I asked this question, what attributes are exhibited by the man who fears God? And I've got a pretty good list here. I recommend you read through the Psalm again and say, okay, what attributes are exhibited by the man who fears the who fears God? I've got 10 attributes here. And um, you know what? I'm going to leave that be for the time being. I'm gonna let you look back through the Psalm and see what you find. What do we learn about the man of God? Um, 
one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's so many. I really do want to talk about that. But I also want to let you be able to engage with God's word as well. Uh, my main point for this psalm is praise the Lord for his blessings to the one who fears the Lord. And I said, this is wisdom. This is skill in living. Like I think this psalm sums it up, right? What is skill in living? What is wisdom? It is fear of the Lord. It is putting our trust in the Lord. All right, there are plenty of applications here, friends. I would love to hear from you. If you would want to comment here on this YouTube video or uh, in our private Facebook group, what, yeah, how are you applying this today? There's a number of beautiful ways. All right, well, I'll look forward to wrapping up this whole week tomorrow. Thanks for being on this journey with me.